my name is Nivol, sometimes also called Nivol, however you are able to pronounce it easily. Um, I'm from the U.S., but I'm originally South Sudanese, and I'm currently doing my MBA in France, a one-year um, MBA program at Essex Business School. Um, I come from a supply chain management and logistics background, and I'm currently transitioning into the luxury industry. Because I've been doing um, logistics and supply chain for about five years, I kind of just felt like I had hit a ceiling. Um, even though I was doing quite well in my uh, profession, um, I just started to feel uninspired. And I also started to feel like it was just becoming very banal and more or less the same thing. And I really wanted to change industries. I wanted to shift. It's something I'd considered for a while. But because luxury is kind of an industry that you can't just switch directly into, you basically have to know people, you have to network. I had no clue how I was actually going to make it happen. And um, I had actually came to Europe just to visit um, right before the pandemic started, early 2020. And I was having dinner with a friend and I was like, you know, I really want to do luxury brand management. And at the time I was just speaking, nothing was actually concrete. And um, she just suggested to me, well, why don't you actually move? And I thought about it, but again, I didn't really know how I was going to make this happen. So I just put it in the back of my mind and uh, the time finally presented itself. So I made the move. I had two options if I wanted to get into luxury. I either had to move um, and then probably maybe start as an entry level job and then work my way up. And that's just keeping it safe. Or if I did have the connections, I could be able to reach out to somebody and ask if there's, you know, opportunities that they could be able to help me. And since I, you know, at the time the pandemic happened and moving to New York City, for example, which is the closest city we have to luxury brands um, actually having headquarters, um, it wasn't feasible. And then I also didn't have any direct contacts. So going back to school was the best option because for me, going to school and getting my bachelor was how I got into my previous industry. So logically, I just thought if I were able to find a program that can be able to connect me to people and give me the credibility to actually switch into this industry, it would make more sense. And so hence why I'm now doing my MBA. Prior in 2016, I had actually studied in France. I studied in Lyon for a semester. And after I, got, I came back to the States and finished my bachelor's, I actually had considered coming back to France to do my master's at some point. And Essex was one of the schools that I had researched some time back, um, but I forgot about it. It wasn't even something that was concrete again, like I said. So I started researching schools that actually have luxury brand management, um, you know, some sort of program. And Essex was one of the ones that came up and also it has a great reputation. Many of the senior executives and senior leaderships in the industry actually went to Essex or have some ties to the school. So having done my research, um, I was able to basically narrow it down to Essex. Um, there was a school in New York as well, NYU, that also had the same program um, and then also the UK. But um, ultimately for me, it's about time. It's also about cost. And then also what are the benefits of the relationships that I can be able to establish and carry that on into the next transition of my life. So I think for me, ever since I was young, I'd always been naturally attracted to the luxury industry. I love fragrance, I love beauty, I love fashion. Um, I love different aspects of it. And I also am a creative. So in my previous industry, I felt like I was stifled from being able to make part or to make use of that part of me that I love. And I just needed to find a way to be able to mix the business acumen and the good sense that I'd learned from experience. And then being able to also use the creative aspect, the part of me that loves to, you know, combine art with passion and, you know, all of these different elements into something that's meaningful. So to me, it was something that I felt I needed to do. And I don't really have much other time, maybe later on in life to be able to make such a drastic change and like I do now. So yeah, it was always going to be a natural fit for me, I think, um, to switch into luxury. But again, um, it took timing and then also just the right opportunity to meet me at the, the right place and for those things to work out. 
So actually, I'm currently doing a five month internship with L'Oreal. Um, L'Oreal is actually um, one of the program, one of the uh, excuse me, one of the companies that has a partnership with my school. And currently I'm a commercial intelligence intern um, within the luxury um, international distribution department. So I'm definitely looking forward to getting into beauty just because it's something that's always been um, very easy for me to be able to uh, grasp. And um, who knows, maybe one day I may transition into fashion, I may pivot into uh, fine jewelry, but for now, definitely beauty. And the best thing about our program and having spoken to alumni, having spoken to people that have been in the industry for a while is that what we learn is able to be transitioned into different sectors and it's uh, holistic. So it's not just one size, um, only for one industry that you'll be able to use from the knowledge. I would say more that there were certain classes that I wish I had more time to actually learn from. For example, uh, data science uh, was a class that we had, and that's actually ironically what I'm doing now. It's something data related. Um, I was excited to learn more about it because right now with um, you know AI and all of these things that are coming up, I wanted to educate myself. I wanted to learn more about it. So I would say that there were certain courses like um, data science, for example, we have Professor Morris, um, who was the former CEO of Armani. He has such a plethora of information. You can listen to him speak all day. There were certain classes that I wish we had more time to actually learn a little bit more. But because we are a boutique um, intensive one year uh, program, uh, everything is condensed. So I would say that's the only thing that surprised me. I thought that it was going to be definitely focused more on the books versus actually doing, but that's uh, okay. The experience that I'm getting outside of the classroom is helping to supplement for the, the short classes that we had. The first time I came to study in France, you know, I was like 21, 22. Um, everything was fresh for me. So it was a whole new experience, you know, another country. Um, I've had the chance to live in different parts of the world growing up. I was born in Sudan. My family actually lived in Egypt for two years prior to moving to the U.S., of course, living in the U.S. So coming to France, there was definitely some adjustments um, that I had to make. Um, but the second time around coming now, I do feel a little bit more comfortable because I know what to expect. But language is definitely something that I'm still working on. Um, and the French way of life, you know, there's there's time for things here. You know, in America, things are definitely moving very fast. And, um, you know, our values are different in different things in different ways. Um, but coming from the U.S., I would definitely say that um, there's definitely just there's not that pressure for you to constantly be chasing the next thing and doing the next thing. You actually have time to really live and enjoy your life while also balancing uh, the ambitions that you're trying to pursue, in my opinion. Wow. What advice would I have given younger me? I would have definitely made more use and time of exploring. At the time, I was in a uh, semester program. So um, the time that I did have, I would try to go to different countries here and there. But um, be open minded. You know, you never you always think, oh, I'm going to do this and I'm going to do this. And you try to plan and structure your life a certain way. But being open to the things that can come to you, being open to opportunities um, and not being afraid. I think the first time I came, I played it very safe. You know, I wanted to make sure I um, represented America in a, in a certain way. I wanted to make sure that um, I could be able to make friends and, you know, still stay within myself. But this time around, I'm saying, no, I'm going to make an effort to speak French. I'm going to make an effort to um, go out and do things that scare me versus just playing it safe. So that's what I would definitely tell my younger self. And that's what I would tell anybody that's, you know, looking to change their life or do something different. You don't always have the answers, but you have to start somewhere. So take the first step and then hopefully from there, uh, the next one's will lead you to where you need to go. We're all required to take a placement test before classes start so that they can figure out where to, to put you. And then we were all required to, the first term to basically take a French class. And then after that, you're basically, it's up to you. If you want to continue, you can. I chose to. 
Um, and then some people actually took it upon themselves to get tutors outside of school so that they can continue um, their education in uh, the French language. So yeah, it's definitely something that's required. And in the first couple of months, we also have a, the first week actually, we have to go to Chablis where we actually get fully integrated into the French culture, French food, and we learn about different things about the country and um, the people. So Essex tries, they definitely do try to make sure that people feel and understand um, the French way of life. Oh, it's definitely inspired and shaped so much of it already considering um, I'm already um, working for a company that I've always admired and I've always loved. Um, and I think the best thing I like about my MBA is that it really did expose us to different industries that I maybe have never even thought about working in. You know, I'm not well knowledgeable about wines and spirits, but you know, I've had the opportunity to have a professor, um, Remy Krug, whose family owns Krug Champagne. We've actually visited their headquarters. Um, we've got to, when we were in London, for example, we also met with Macallan, uh, which is a whiskey brand. I don't know a lot about these things, but it's always nice hearing about it from people who do have the experience and also classmates that also have knowledge and experience in these things. So being able to share and collaborate and being exposed to so many different parts, um, it really does help shape my mind and also um, build the connections um, to see how, okay, how is one sector influencing this sector? And, you know, how are these things going on um, versus just reading about it or maybe hearing about it in the news and in the press, so. This is actually the first year that the school has opened up internships as being an option. Typically, it is a capstone project, which is basically a consultancy project we do with um, a company. Um, so this year, L'Oreal versus actually offering a capstone project, they um, sourced us internships based on internal business needs and missions that they have. So just like everybody else, I had to apply. Um, I had a chance to meet some of the HR people actually. We visited L'Oreal's um, different sites. So I had a chance to learn a little bit about what they have going in. And then after that, I send my resume and then they start to basically um, shortlist people. And we have a series of rounds. So it's about three rounds you have to go through. It's not a one process. And uh, with each round, they basically refine um, the applicant and they try to make sure they can find the best fit based on your interviews and then also based on your experience and where you want to go. So my interview was pretty much, like I said, done in three parts. And then the final part, I met with the my current boss and the department manager. And then after that, um, I got feedback and then they offered me the internship. So it was a process for sure. I would probably say that one thing that maybe people need to pay attention to is also researching the job markets before uh, you decide on like your particular school. Now that's one thing I wish I would have spent more time because I didn't realize how hard it was to actually get a job in France. Um, in the US, you know, you apply for a job and you know, if you're lucky and you know somebody that works there, it could help you know, move your application up, but usually it's it's more or less supposed to be a merit based. But here in France, even for native French people, it's it's tough. Um, so, but I don't think that should discourage you because when there's a will, there is always a way. But I would definitely encourage um, incoming applicants or incoming people, do your research and understand your field very well so that you can know where you can actually shine and also your blind spots, you know, the areas that you may need to improve so that you may be a um, good applicant after you graduate and you're able to find uh, where you want to go.